Yo, what's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Welcome back to Carcino for Life channel. Don't forget to support the page. The Cash App is Carcino. The Patreon is Carcino for Life, where we went over a lot of details in the Patreon about what has been happening and going on. And um, this is another situation in which Suge Knight got incorrect. Um, the thing that he's neglecting to mention, as I told you, should tell these stories in his collect calls. Now he's saying he spent over 700000 for a trial. It's like, gee, well, she killed somebody. She had a murder trial, and I had to pay 700000 for the lawyer just so she can get off. You know, she talked real disrespectful about me. So I said some things back, and, you know, it is what it is when it come to that, but I did a lot for people, and for her to do that and be ungrateful when at the same time they knew what the situation was when we first uh, did what we did. But she knew, and she tried to act as if it was something else. Now, she went and shot this guy. I told her not to get get with this guy because I knew the guy. And I said, ain't nothing he could do for you. And this is where people don't understand um, what we're talking about when we break down certain... When we start to talk about all of these releases and all of these uh, programs and how they're being developed and the situations have uh, unfolded and unscripted to the point where now the world is like, oh my God, you were right, sir. You were so right. Right is right. And the reason why is because you're dealing with a situation that is on the horizon for being a drastically different type of situation. Now, yeah, you, you have a lot of people that that wish and dream that they could do other things that they can't do now. You know what I'm saying? Now, if we were to go ahead and say, Suge Knight could go ahead and resurrect the entire project, like, if he was to go back and resurrect the whole direction of death row, if you notice, they had no female releases. None. Not one female album came out during that time. Coincidence? No, it's not coincidence. The female album didn't come out because they were not even thinking about, remotely caring about, promoting to women. The women were the background with singers or whatever. They weren't thinking about putting out women albums. It was all about the men. Very much male dominance there. And this is where he dropped the ball when it came to uh, having females, you know, and cater to the music that they like as far as, as getting those, the R&B and radio spins. They were dominating on the West Coast and getting radio spins and selling albums without radio just because the chicks was liking what the dudes liked. So they was just going along with that scenario. But women also like to hear other women sing. They like R&B. And Diddy was smart enough to have that element. But Juelle was supposed to start the label off like that. She had her woman, the woman song. She had her album and Suge would not put it out. Now... Joel was, you know, wow. She was in the streets. She was rugged. She did her thing, you know, and 
That was that. She took what she wanted, and she was street. And she wasn't going to take no mess. Rest in peace to her, you know. Now, when other people started to see the process and all the progress that was being made, <coughs> at death row, Joel, who was singing on a lot of these songs, was kept in the background. Even uh, on the awards show, when she was singing on the awards, they had her in the background singing. You never really saw her face. Now, Suge said she killed a man. Let's get into that. Her longtime boyfriend that she was dating was a guy who was one of the founders of the Pyrus named Putin. Putin was a very, you know, violent man at times. You know, he put his hands in places where he shouldn't. Plenty of times. Violent temper. But overall, was a protector. Was a nice human being. Ride for his dogs. But, Suge said, that dude ain't going nowhere. He only going to bring you down. You need to get away from him. And he told this to Joel, um, that I was told that that's what he told her, that that dude's going to pull you down. So you need to get away from him. And every time they would break up, they would get back together. But this time, he got mad at her over something she did. And, you know, her accused of her of sleeping around or doing whatever, and he put hands on her, and she went and got a, a firearm, and she shot him. Now, here's the thing where she got wrong, is that she didn't kill the man. Uh, he survived the shooting. He was in the hospital, and I don't know how this even went to where Suge had to pay $700,000. That's where he has it very incorrect because I don't know where he would spend the 700000 because they charged, they, you know, decided to no file against her when she was, for after they was going to try to charge her, um, he wasn't pressing charges against her and he was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life and he ended up passing away, rest in peace to that man and his family um, down the road, but he refused to press charges against her and forgave her even though she put him in a wheelchair. You know, she tried to protect herself because she was being beaten. And I don't know where she would spend $700,000 at. So, that was my, where my confusion came in at in the situation was the money indifference um, and the inaccuracies that was told in the stories that uh, Shook was saying. Um, now, he can probably verify how he know about 700000 and the things he was doing, but, I mean, from my point of view, I just know that was inaccurate. The guy lived. He died later, but like some years later he didn't she didn't kill a man that I know of unless he's talking about something else besides the only thing that we know that she was involved in as far as Dre I, I told you I heard Dre got shot in a hotel not a studio People say, oh, the engineer shot him in the studio. It's an engineer. All I know is a dude that was messing with Jewel. And Dre went to defend Jewel at the hotel. And he got shot in the leg. That 
Uh, I don't remember him getting shot in the leg four times. I remember him getting shot once. Um, I don't know who, you know, that's the story I heard. Man, it's a lot of times. Them dudes are so lucky to still be here. You know, somebody was praying for them because, I mean, there's been plenty of times bullets were sailing right, like, under their noses. Like, it was crazy. Uh, well, when people decide that they uh, reach the impasse or they reach the point where something's just not making sense or it's not coming to light what needs to be done and you can't see the clearer picture or you can't see an out, then people are going to start to act out. Joel was being, you know, ostracized. So was the Lady of Rage. They felt like we were getting pushed back for the men to shine. And, you know, the Lady of Rage couldn't really shut out when he finished. But she was like, I would have finished it if, you know, the guys helped out. You know, that's what we normally did. Cause that's, you know, that's what her thing is. We all chipped in and helped out. When Pac came to death row, everybody chipped in, stopped whatever they were working on, and gave everything to Pac. Like, we need to get this album out ASAP. Strike while the iron. Get everything over the top. Now, the Lady of Rage and Pac fell out because she was, you know, she's from the East Coast. She's got a lot of East Coast, you know, like people over there that ride with her from the East Coast. So she wasn't really feeling this West Side Ride thing. She felt that was pretty stupid anyway. And when he wouldn't play, she wouldn't play ball. And he was like, I want you to go at Foxy Brown, Little Kim, and all the female rappers over there from the East. Because we need a female in the Outlaws. And we're going to make Lady of Rage an outlaw. And it was like, nah. <laughs> She wasn't going for it, so, you know, Pac was like, you the only weakest link on the team, you know, like, <laughs> trying to make her feel bad about not holding down the West Coast. Pac wanted everybody to be on his time. Like, if he was riding, everybody's supposed to be riding with him. That's just how he wanted to do it. Um, when they start looking at bringing people together, doing things to make it, you know, a better tomorrow, in other words. i never forget it. Um... Sticky Fingers, he didn't, he didn't want nothing to do with Pac at that time. You know, uh, it was never uh, Fredro Starr, who was a fan of Pac, because they all was fans of Pac. But Sticky wasn't really feeling that. When he was talking about Big, he was, yo, man, Biggie, our mans, you know. That's my mans in there, you know, like. So my man, 20 grand, you know what I'm saying? Big and all that, you know what I'm saying? We cool and all that, but Pac, dude tripping. You know, like he's really tripping on New York, and I ain't feeling that. I don't even want to be around him. So Sticky wasn't really around, dude, because he was really bugged by that. Uh, never was around him. So when they was like, Pac had Onyx on his side, and all, uh, Sticky wasn't really feeling that. You know what I'm saying? So... They was moving differently at that time. Like, they were moving more like individual artists than the group Onyx. So, he decided to make that jump on his own. Well, everyone, everyone loves to play the victim. That's the key. Everybody wants to be a victim. 
Nobody wants to be who they are. Should Knight knows what he's doing, man. I mean, he's telling a story that that goes over to his genre and makes him look good. You know, and <clears throat> that's really what he wanted to promote. Was like his version of it that makes him look good. I don't, I don't see, that's the thing, the difference between me and a lot of other people. I don't see things the way other people see it. I see Suge Knight being a person who's conflicted, another person who's an egomaniac, and it's hard for them to see the error in their ways. So when you see a lot of people who can't seem to get out of their own way, and tell you the way it should go. You know, the way it's supposed to be. They can't. They got to tell you the movie. The way it's designed or laid out. The way they see it only. That's the only way they know how to do it. They should cannot tell a story and where he's at fault for something. He's done nothing wrong. Now, when it comes to me, somebody else could tell you about 90% of the stuff that they say or see or whatever is the truth or a lie or whatever. I'm just going to tell you flat out this is the design flaw that goes along when you're dealing with people like Suge. Suge is going to tell you he did all these wonderful things but everything had a catch to it. So if he was paying 700000 there was a catch. If he did all of these different things there was a catch. Now, no, I've seen a lot of people make similar mistakes when it comes to um, breaking down scenarios and situations, and I told people about a million times, these scenarios are not going to change. So people need to get used to it or make adjustments for the future. No, I, I'm totally over this death row thing, man. Like, they finessed Suge to get the company from him because they didn't want Suge in the business no more. <clears throat> so they definitely did that, you know. Lydia finessed Michael Harris. Michael Harris was working to try to finesse and get the company from Suge. Neither one of them really owned the company. They just helped, you know, make it a reality.
Now, yeah, um, many people say stuff like, this isn't good, or this isn't the way, and, you know, you, you hear a lot of people complain about shit, so. I am not worried about it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and shut things down for right now um we'll collaborate on this a little later and go from there but other than that um that's pretty much it man you know there ain't too much to it he was inaccurate. She didn't kill anybody uh, that I know of. And that's that. Don't forget to uh, support the page. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, whatever. Um, I got a lot of business to take care of. So I'll talk to y'all later on. It's your boy Carcino saying thank you. God bless. Shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Welcome to HD, Two Eyes TV. Jack Sports with all Xavier Rodriguez. Damn DB, Armando Black TV, and I'm out.